We got all the rumors and news to get through here today on this February 12th. We got top players to get cut this offseason. Yeah, some good stuff, some negative stuff because NFL players once again finding themselves in trouble. They just can't stay out of it. That's in right. Including one Reuben Foster. He is our news and rumor number one. Let's get into it. Of course, Foster was recently arrested back in January of 2018 and now he's been arrested on suspicion of domestic violence. Tom, not a good look. Yeah, it's really bad for Ruben Foster. Here's what we know so far and not all the details have come out, but some of the local papers down in San Francisco area, the Bay Area, have done some great jobs reporting on this. So there are really two charges that Foster can or will face here. The first one, of course, is the domestic violence thing. Apparently what ended up happening was, per, per the, uh, the San Jose Mercury Times, was that uh, his girlfriend accused him of physically dragging her through, him, uh, through his apartment uh, in Los Gatos, which is southwest of San Jose, Sunday morning. She and Foster were arguing, and then he threw her belongings out onto the front walkway and balcony, i.e. kind of kicking her around, and then dragged her through the house. So that's what the accusation says from there. But that wasn't the only thing. Foster was also found with an assault rifle, which in California you can't actually do. So I think you, you mentioned this there later, and we'll bring it back up versus what's going on with him in Alabama after the, the uh, marijuana possession charge. In California, you can't have an assault rifle or any type of military-grade assault rifle unless you had it before they implemented their law, i.e. the grandfathering in clause. So with Reuben Foster, this is his second arrest, and this was a, an a SBR, or a short-barreled rifle. Kind of looks like your classic M16, but a, a smaller head at, yep. the, at the end of the barrel there. So a lot of bad stuff going on for Foster right now. And it looks really bad for him in terms of playing next year because now you've got the domestic violence accusation against him. We saw it happen with Ezekiel Elliott. Apparently in the NFL, you don't even need to be charged or convicted. Just the accusation enough is, is enough to get you suspended. Well, of course, the burden of proof in the NFL, way different than the general U.S. court system. And for Reuben Foster, we have a weigh-in for the folks at home, Tom. Should he be suspended for six games? Because that's the protocol, air quotes protocol, in the NFL. Look, the policy is that the first offense will subject the offender, or in this case Foster, whomever, to a baseline of six-game suspension. That's the baseline. It's not just a mitigating factors can reduce it. It's supposed to be that mitigating factors actually can increase it. So in some of those aggravating factors are if there's, if there's a child near there or if there's, there's a full-on weapon involved. But So where we sit right now with what the NFL has set as their precedent with Ezekiel Elliott is that it should be six games. That's where we should be with Ruben Foster. So, and I tell you what, right now, and we'll get to another example of this here in a minute, Cam. But Cowboys Twitter is very much enraged oh, if, if, if someone does not get the full six games suspension. Absolutely. If Foster doesn't. So, I think with this being the second arrest for Foster in less than a full month, I think you're going to see some type of suspension. There's no way you're not because it's very clear that he needs to get it to get to get some help there. The Niners have to surround him with with better people. He needs a handler, kind of like the whole Des Bryant had in, in in Dallas when he first got there. Foster needs better structure around him because he clearly cannot be trusted just to be on, on his own. All right, so that's note number one in our NFL News and Rumors Roundup. If you are an avid watcher of NFL Daily, you are probably used to those Goodell heads. We chose not to use them on this one, Tom, yeah, because it's pretty serious. It didn't seem appropriate because yeah. we ended up settling on that. And we are settling on that with this one, too. Kareem Hunt accused of assault. Tom, this was breaking news an hours ago. What do we know? Well, it's it seems to be very much in that he said, she said type category here. So the Cleveland Plain Dealer reported this earlier today. Day, a Middleburg Heights woman told police that Hunt pushed and shoved her. Now, Hunt went to Toledo, so that's why he's kind of in, in the Cleveland area. So, what it was near as I can tell, if you take the police report as what actually happened, which isn't always the case, sure. and again, it's two different perspectives kind of coming into one, what, what appears to be happening is Hunt was at a bar one night with a bunch of his friends. A 19 year old woman named Abigail Ottinger, who is only 19, they, they all met, they eventually went back to Hunt's bar, so Hunt's friends and then Otter's friend group group as well. And then Hunt finds out she's 19. And Hunt and his friends say, nope, got to go. You, you, we are not, we're not playing this game with an underage girl. We're not going to help provide you more alcohol. So they kick her out. She doesn't want to leave. And apparently she's pounding on his door at, at, at a Cleveland hotel and all that kind of stuff. She did that for upwards of a half hour, apparently. At some point, one of the, the female friends in Hunt's group went out and told her to try and get to leave. At that point, according to this friend, Ottinger actually hit her in the face. Mm. So that was the, that was the one accusation involving this. And then Hunt says he never came out. 
She says, Ottinger says, that Hunt came out and shoved her in an attempt to, to get her to leave. Eventually, the, the police were called. Apparently, the hotel staff wouldn't let her call police at one point. So it seems very much like a he said, she it's said. It's very muddy. It doesn't seem quite as as maybe severe as the Foster allegation, if we're going to try and put severity on these. But again, it's not an ideal look for a cream hunt, but it does seem to fall a little bit more in that he said, she said category. For what it's worth, one police report had Hunt as the suspect, a different one had Ottinger as a suspect because of the different accusations around people being punched. All right, sounds like a big spider web of problems right now, but there is Kareem Hunt there accused of shoving a woman. And of course, this is a developing story. We'll be tracking it for you. Let's get into news and rumor number three here. On the lighter side of things, Tom, the NFL and Johnny Manziel back in the storylines again. We're giving this one Goodell head yeah. about teams being interested so, in him. So Manziel is doing his media round here, and we'll explain what the, what the, what the Goodell heads mean now. Because if you see no Goodell heads, it means, it means fake news. We'll also have a fake news graphic again. Those first two didn't have the Goodell heads at all because it didn't seem very appropriate to do. One good eye means there's a small shred of truth. Two means that people are talking. Three means it's more probable than not. And four means it's fact news. But back to Manziel. Just the one head, it seems to be that there might be a small shred of truth here. Manziel's going on his little little media tour right now. He hit up Good, he hit up good Morning America. Well, he was, uh, he was on uh, the, the Barstool Sports Podcast, part of my take. Naturally. And Manziel said that, quote, there were some things that were transpiring last year that I thought might really work out that were not as well known to the public behind Simpson and thought we were making some progress and then things kind of slowed down and Manziel says there was some interest in me from NFL teams and I really wanted to make this fake news because I don't believe a word out of Johnny Manziel. Oh mouth. come on Tom. No don't I don't. Don't be so cynical. I don't believe a word out of his mouth but he did meet with Sean Payton last year. Payton said it was just a meeting but there was at least that so there's at least a little bit of smoke here. Okay. Only one one Goodell head Manziel says that he's also been uh, diagnosed with bipolar disorder and has stopped drinking, which I hope he has, because I'd like to see him get his life on track. But with that said, Cam, I'm very curious what you, what you think with this land. Let's say you need a quarterback in the NFL, or, or, or just the backup quarterback. Would you want your favorite team to sign Johnny Manziel? Should JFF get another shot in the NFL? You know what? He should just go to the XFL, okay? That's where he <laughs> That's should go. That's several years away, though. But you know what? No. Well, work ahead of that and get ahead of the game and, and get prepared for the XFL. Look, as a Baltimore Ravens fan, putting on my fan hat, I would not want the Ravens to sign Johnny Menzel. In fact, I would very much prefer Colin Kaepernick to be the backup to oh, Joe me, Flacco. Me too. Yeah, uh, so well, Kaepernick should actually start over Joe. Flacco. Well, that's right. totally false because <laughs> Joe Flacco has a ring and Colin Kaepernick does not, and uh, need I say more? But yes, Johnny Menzel, I mean, look, you can go into the draft and get a better, cleaner version, not so much cleaner, than Johnny Menzel, Baker Mayfield. Let's be real here. All right. You can so, also get one who doesn't bring the same negative side effects. So I, I get the love of Johnny Manziel. Last year when, when I hosted the Cowboys report, it was almost a weekly thing. Hey, should we sign Manziel? That has died down. So I, I think the Manziel hype and the love affair around him at times has very much cooled off that he's been out, out of the NFL for a year. All right, folks, throw in your respective thoughts into the comments section. We know that Johnny Menzel is a very polarizing topic. We want to hear from you here on NFL Daily as we get into news and rumor number four, Daryl Bevel as an offensive coordinator in the NFL. We're giving this two Goodell heads. Tom, what's the story? Well, Bevel, of course, was the Seahawks OC, and he no longer has that job because Seattle went ahead and blew up that entire coaching staff for the most part. Now he's getting interest from two different teams. CBS says the Colts want him. ESPN says he could be an option for the New York Giants. So I think this is a prime example of people are talking because he could have some interest. I don't know if he actually gets either job because, Cam, I don't know if Bevel's actually any good. Like, I, I actually question whether or not Daryl Bevel is a, is a really good offensive coordinator and if NFL team should actually desire him. So, would you desire him? No, I wouldn't. And if, if I'm a Cowboys fan or a Redskins or an Eagles fan and the, and the Giants hire Bevel, I say, okay, cool. Not a big deal. If I'm a Texans, Titans, or Jags fan, the Colts hire Bevel, I'm like, okay, not a big deal. Okay. Like, he doesn't like, it's not like, oh, man, they got John D. Flip. Oh, I'm concerned. Or they got this great coach. Like, oh, they got Daryl Bevel. Whatever. Head scratcher. Uh, he, like, yeah, he had... Wilson in a bad offensive line. He was, it was exactly what they should have been. Uh, he didn't elevate that play, I don't think. All right, so people are talking on this one as you see the rumor origin, CBS and ESPN, respectively. Let's get into news and rumor number five here. 
Houston Texans tight end C.J. Fedorowicz. Is he set to retire? Yeah, this He very well might. We're giving this one three Goodell heads because I actually think it seems pretty likely. And Fedorowicz has been very open about this because he has suffered multiple concussions. And that's a scary thing. He missed a lot of this year with those concussions. And he said at Bettis and maybe a little bit like, ooh, that's very accurate. Quote, you can't go repair your brain. It's not like an ACL or, or shoulder, which is a very accurate, I think, very maybe concerning thought. And I agree with, with, with Fedorowicz here. He is going to come back for the workouts and team activities in April and May, and then he'll make a decision. He said that he might very well retire. He could sit out 2018 and then go reconsider what happens in the offseason. But when it comes to Fedorowicz, I think there's a real chance he retires, which would put the Texans in desperate need of a tight end. And tune in Wednesday, we go through some top region tight ends, maybe Jimmy Graham. Ooh. They got the cap space. Okay. All right. So there are the Houston Texans and C.J. Fedorowicz perhaps retiring. Let's get into the final news and rumor here. David Amerson, will he be signed by the Houston Texans? He was recently cut by the Raiders. Well, he visited the Texans today, also visited the Bears in the past. Apparently has three other visits lined up as well. Houston is an option, but Amerson going to have a lot of interest out there as a veteran, the rare veteran who's available at this point in the year. I don't know if he ends up in Houston, even though Jonathan Joseph and Marcus Williams are, are free agents here, but Ian Rapport, Rapport reported that one originally. I don't know what we're going to see Emerson end up doing. I would not be surprised if he ends up in Houston, but he's going to have enough interest that he can almost kind of pick his spot in the end.